For this lesson, we're going to focus on how to create a XML file using FlowGraph and writing to that file. This will be a three-part series. This first one will show us how to basically build a system to log the amount of times that we kill an entity, and then it will write that value, which would be a graph token in this case, to an XML file for us to reference. And this is very, very familiar if you've had high scores in games. This is what they would do would be they write it out to a table, something to reference outside of the application, so then when you jump back in, you can see the scores reflected properly. So the first thing that we need to do is stick in a flow graph entity. I'm going to go to Entity, Default, Flow Graph Entity, and snap that in. I'm going to right click and do Create Flow Graph. We'll call this XML Logic underscore FG. And I'm going to take the Flow Graph window and dock it in place. So going inside of this, the first thing that we're going to do that's a little bit different is we're going to get a graph token. So we want to go up to Edit Graph Tokens. When this comes up, we want to make a new token, and we'll call this one Point, and we'll make this an int. So an int value is a whole number. Keep that in mind. So now that we've created our game token, we can kind of reference it to begin with. So let's go to Q, Mission, colon, Game Token. So now we have the token that we need to point to, which is called Point, and click OK. So the next thing that we want to do is display this. So we'll go to Q, Display, and it says Display Debug Message. So I know that I want to display a message, and I kind of want to have a value in front of it. So what we're going to do is go to Add Node, and we can go to String Concatenate. So we're going to set the output to set, and then we're going to set the output of this game token to String 2. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the String 1, and we're going to type in Active Token, so we can keep track. Expand it a little bit. And then we're going to make this to show the message. The next thing that I want to do is kind of initialize the token. So I need to set the token whenever I start. So I'm going to go to Q, Mission, Game, Token, Set. And on output, I want to trigger the token, which is the point. And I want to set the value to 0. So we're going to put a comment box right here, and we're going to call this one Initialize. I'm going to change it to white. It's easier to see. And then I'll surround the nodes. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to actually begin to kill something, and in this case we're going to kill a person. So I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to go back and get a tag point to begin with. So I'm going to go to AI, tag point, and we're going to call this one spawn. So I know that I'm going to spawn from this point. I need to go to my flow graph again, and we're just going to add that selected entity. Got to select it first. So we'll add it, and then we can reference this point. So we have some things to actually build here. Let's go ahead and grab another start node, since we're in a different section of the graph. And I know that I want to shoot, so I'm going to go to Q, Weapon, Hit, Info. And what this is going to do is allow us to basically keep track of what we hit. So if I go to Q, Local Player, because I want to say that I am the shooter, so I'm shooting, and I enable it on start, but I need to be able to say, okay, 
what exactly is the target that I am shooting? So I can go to Q Entity, and then we can go to Entity Info. And this int info is going to lead us to a class. So we're getting there almost. So what we want to do is we want to reference a class that we shoot. And in our case, that is the human class. So we're going to go to the Q string compare. And we're going to reference this class in these two positions. So the class of the human that I need to query is right there. And what I want to do is I want to check if he's dead. So we're going to go to Q again, and we'll do actor, alive, check. So the target ID right here will be what I'm checking, and based on it being true, set off a trigger. And then we'll go to Q, mission, game token, modify. And I want to grab my token the point, and I want to set this to an actual operation of add. And it's going to be an int value because you can keep track that our token was an int and we want to add one to it. So in theory, every time one of these guys dies, it will trigger this token. So that's great and everything, but we actually need to be able to spawn things. So what we're going to do is go to Q, Entity, colon, Spawn, Archetype. So this is more like a preset that we're spawning. And this is where the spawn actually comes into play, is so we can go to that position. So what we're looking for in our archetype is a human, and I don't want to have anybody that's extremely hard to kill, so I'm going to go to easy, and we'll call this name human point. So now we need to be able to spawn these out, and we can do this by going to Q, time, timer, and in this, we don't have to deal with min or max, but the period is very important because that's the amount of seconds that it's going to actually tick through. So I know on the start, I want it to tick. So I need to do a Q logic any. And now I can take this and put this in the second input, but on the first, the actual game start will initialize it. So now I'm ready to go and put this into the spawn, and I've put my incremental value. Let's move this back. Try to make space for it, and then we'll make another comment box. So we'll call this one increment value. So let's make this white, and we'll check it out. Be able to go to debug. So if we come in here, we should see something or someone spawn here whenever we jump in. So there's a guy right there. And you can see the active tokens up top. Whenever I shoot them, it's actually adding. So it's modifying it based on this kill. So this is going to wrap up the first part of the video. We're going to go into the XML writing and reading, and then also the custom attributes in the next part.